do we have a show for you this week? Oh my goodness, so much news happening. We are going to start off with Tati Westbrook coming on this week, clarifying some things that we talked about last week. We have some additional details to add to the story about Tati's lawsuits that are going on right now, the lawsuits that led to the closing of Tati Beauty. After that, we have a breaking news story about Bernard Arnold, who is the CEO of LVMH, aka the owner of Sephora and so many other brands being investigated for money laundering. I have all of the details on that. And then when we get into the product report, we have a very unlikely collaboration with Charlotte Tilbury. This was not on my bingo card for 2023. And a liquor company who is capitalizing on Taylor Swift's alleged new relationship with a makeup product. What is... What is even happening? I'm about to tell you. Hang tight. We're getting into it right now. Hello, my friend. Welcome to What's Up and Makeup, where we talk about everything that is happening in the beauty space all in one place. So you don't have to search around. You don't have to do all the research. I did all the research for you, and I've got all the news for you, starting with Tati Westbrook and her clarifying her video that she had released last week with some different information that she's talked about in her new video that she launched this past week. So last week, we talked about why Tati Westbrook closed Tati Beauty in the midst of doing Doing extremely well. One of the reasons she cited was ongoing litigation, which we can probably assume is with her former business partner named Clark Swanson. This week, Tati released a video called Addressing Rumors, My Plastic Surgery. And to be clear, the vast majority of this video is about plastic surgery, Tati's feelings about it, procedures she's had. She also touches on her current litigation that she's fighting in Las Vegas, Nevada. This story isn't really makeup related, but because we talked about it last week, I felt like it was important to clarify a couple of things that she said in that video in case you haven't watched it or don't plan on watching it. So at about the two minute mark, Tati says this. And I'm just in a new era right now where I would like to take everything and lay it out and just have a more authentic, raw, to the point relationship with you guys. Like that's how I'm feeling in my life right now. I'm going through an interesting transformation where everything's kind of coming to a point with litigation and I'm literally pre-filming this right now so I can hop on a plane and go battle that out in Vegas. Then she talks about how she received a demand letter for $30 million and the full company of Halo Beauty. And Tati was like, you want what? You want what? You, I don't have $30 million. And why are you, why do you feel like you have the right to take my entire company? So of course she had to fight it. The part she clarified that I think is really important because I didn't get this quite right last week was that the California lawsuit that had been dismissed, the one that was uh, filed in October of 2020, that was for alleged fraud, negligence, and breach of fiduciary duty against the Westbrooks from Clark Swanson, that that had been dismissed. It has been dismissed. That is still true. But that is the case that has now been moved to Nevada because it wasn't really supposed to be filed in California. Well, it wasn't supposed to be filed in California. I shouldn't say really. It wasn't supposed to be filed in California. It was supposed to be filed in Nevada. So it was dismissed there and then moved to Nevada. It also seems like the ongoing contract business lawsuit filed by Halo Beauty Partners against Clark Swanson is kind of a companion lawsuit to this. That was filed in July of 2021. This is the countersuit, it seems, to Clark's suit against the Westbrooks. So many of you commented about Emily D. Baker's coverage of all of this at the time, and you are 100% right. I actually interviewed Emily back then, right after all of that blew up. So I am very well aware of that coverage. But the thing about the coverage, my friends, is it is so many hours long. It is so many hours long. If, so if you are super interested in this case, I definitely recommend checking out Emily's coverage of it from back then. Like we mentioned last week, of course, Tati is only allowed to say so much because she is in current litigation, but she did hint at in this video that once all of this is done, once it's all settled and wrapped up, she does have more that she wants to say on the topic. And I know a lot of you commented last week down below about how much you hoped that some version of Tati Beauty would come back. I have to tell you, 
I agree. Uh, I really, really love the Textured Neutrals Volume 1 palette. She did sneak the design and the color layout of what she had planned to do for Textured Neutrals Volume 2. It really was a fantastic formula. She did a wonderful job, and I think that she would continue to do well in the beauty space if she relaunched some version of Tati Beauty. So hopefully, hopefully at some point, we will get that. But for now, we just have to patiently wait until all of the lawsuits wrap up before we hear whether we'll get more makeup from Tati Westbrook. We'll just have to see. Very important note before I tell the story. Super, super important to remember and put in the back of our heads, even though we probably already know this, that an investigation is just that. It's an investigation. It doesn't mean that anybody is guilty of anything. It just means people are looking at this because it looks a little weird, but it doesn't mean something fishy is going on. So, so important. So in this case, we are talking about French prosecutors, and they are currently investigating a transaction between Bernard Arnault, who, like I said in the intro, is the CEO of LVMH, aka the owner of Sephora, and so many other brands in the luxury space. So a transaction between that dude and a Russian oligarch named Nikolai Sarkasov. This is over suspicions of possible money laundering. According to the articles that are linked down below, Nikolai is a senior executive at a Russian insurance company and prosecutor prosecutors are looking into an Alpine real estate purchase by Sarkasov. The purchase allowed for this luxury ski resort to be expanded on. It is the Hotel Cheval Blanc in Courchevel, hopefully I said that right, in France, using a loan from one of Bernard's companies. It didn't specify which company, but one of his companies. Bernard is alleged to have loaned Nikolai $21.2 million for this expansion. The investigation was prompted by a warning from France's anti-money laundering unit. It's called Trackfin, and it's apparently been going on since 2022. Information was leaked that this is happening. They've been really good at keeping it under wraps, but now it is out there. Of course, in response to these allegations, both Bernard and Nikolai's lawyers are like, nah, we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything wrong. Everything's fine here. We're good. Bernard himself has said that he's prepared to answer any questions regarding the deal and is trying to cooperate in getting this wrapped up. The result of this preliminary investigation will dictate whether French authorities will proceed with a formal investigation or dismiss the case entirely. And you know, I will definitely keep my eye on this because this is... This is interesting to me. This is fascinating. I'm really hoping that it's not true, but you never know. It has been a tough year for Olaplex. Back in February, 28 women filed a class action lawsuit against the company saying that Olaplex's products hurt them in one way or another. It, they said that it caused hair loss, injuries to the scalp, and brittle hair. The case was dismissed back in July because the judge looked at it and they were like, all right, so you have a problem with the entire Olaplex line which product did what to you again? Because all 28 women had 28 different stories of which product caused which thing. So they couldn't really nail down that the Olaplex products were the root of the problem. So it was just dismissed, except for the original case. She was allowed to refile if she wanted to, and it doesn't look like she's doing that. Besides the class action lawsuit, Olaplex's sales have also dropped significantly. They announced their projections for 2023 and they dropped a lot, which led to a 27% decrease in their stock price. I'll put the exact numbers on the screen, but it was a drop of a projection of about $100 million in projected sales. Now, we don't know whether the class action lawsuit had anything to do with this because it was relatively public. The big class action lawsuit, they had talked about it on their Instagram and all of that. Uh, I don't know if that hurt their sales, but it definitely couldn't have helped. At the time, Olaplex's CEO, her name is Jui Wong, she had put out a statement in August regarding the lower sales. She said, quote, retail channels experience lower demand and some customers right size their inventory positions in response to current trends. But one thing that the smart viewers of What's Up in Makeup put out as maybe a possibility is that there are so many brands now that are coming out with hair bonding dupes for Olaplex at a cheaper price point. Olaplex is $30 a bottle for most of their products and that's just not accessible for a lot of people. So when people go to the store and they see a pre-shampoo treatment that is a hair bonding treatment for 13 bucks or they see the Inky List, they came out with a $14 post-wash spray that's supposed to be a hair bonding thing. Like why would I pay double as much to do the exact 
same thing. So last week, I guess Olaplex knows this because they decided to fight against the duping culture by releasing an advertising campaign talking about how Olaplex can't be duped. They made a dupe of their Olaplex number three and they called it Oladupe number 160. And the 160 is a reference to the amount of patent holdings that Olaplex has for their hair treatments. They had over 100 earned and paid influencers launch this dupe product on their social media platforms. I'm gonna go ahead and play uh, a little clip of it for you now. Breaking news, there is a new Olaplex dupe. Probably the best dupe I've ever seen. I have to tell you guys something. I have a confession. Ola Dupe is actually just Olaplex. Olaplex is undupable. There are so many products out there that are trying to be Olaplex. No one is going to have the same 160 patents and bonds building technology that simply cannot be copied. Don't waste your money. Get the real deal. Trust me, you do not want to get duped. Apparently the hashtag Olaplex dupe has over 30 million views. So what they did was they put hashtag Olaplex dupe in the advertising for their fake dupe product to tell the people that are looking for Olaplex dupes, hey, you can't dupe us. This isn't real. Like, nice try, but we are better. So let me break this down of kind of how I see it. Um, I don't think this campaign will work. <laughs> <laughs> the big reason is, it's like, okay, so let's say Olaplex can't be duped. Then the customers who buy the Olaplex dupes, maybe you tried Olaplex and now you try a dupe and it's not nearly as good, you're going to go back to the Olaplex if Olaplex really truly can't be duped. If it can be duped, then they're probably going to buy the cheaper product. There's also going to be a market of people who will never and would never have bought Olaplex and the dupe thing is just a way for them to access these hair bonding treatments that they never would have been Olaplex customers anyway. So if they're going to lose money in the grand scheme of things, for me, at least from my perspective, I feel like it's because Olaplex can be duped. If it truly can't, they shouldn't be losing money. Does, it, am I making sense? Does that make sense? Because it makes sense in my brain. <laughs> I mean, it is clear that Olaplex sells a ton of products. So like when we go back to those numbers, the net sales forecast is a range of $445 million to $465 million. They are still selling a sh ton of Olaplex. So it must be working for somebody. So all Olaplex needs to do is to continue to create products that truly aren't dupable. But in the end, I don't think this campaign is going to change anybody's mind. I feel like if you love Olaplex, you're going to continue to use it. If you're looking for a dupe, you may try it. If you like the dupe, you're going to stick with it. If you don't like the dupe, you're going to go back to Olaplex. And this campaign is, I don't, I don't see why. I think it feels more defensive to me than proactive. It feels more of somebody taking it personally because they worked really, really hard on something, which I totally get completely human emotion rather than it actually being a functional step to encourage customers to purchase the product. If you are familiar with Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez, you're probably familiar with the Rare Impact Fund. The purpose of the Rare Impact Fund is to help support youth mental health initiatives. Sephora and Selena Gomez's Rare Beauty have teamed up for World Mental Health Day. That is on October 10th. What is going to happen on that day is Sephora is going to donate 100% of sales from Rare Beauty to the Rare Impact Fund. In a press release, Selena said, quote, the mental health crisis is one of the most serious issues facing young people people today and this work would not be possible without the support of partners like Sephora who not only believe in this mission but donate crucial funds to expand mental health resources to young people around the world. According to the foundation to date the Rare Impact Fund has reached more than 740,000 young people, 10,000 teachers and administrators and 367 educational systems. In a press release they said that funds raised through the Make a Rare Impact campaign will directly support existing and future Rare Impact Fund grantees and ensure young people receive access to the resources they need to support their mental health. And the success of Rare Beauty should add a significant chunk of change to that fund. Industry sources say that Rare Beauty sales will top $300 million this year. Get this, this is in comparison to $100 million in 2022 and only 50, only $50 million, but only $50 million in 2021. They are growing very, very fast. Part of that growth is due to Rare Beauty now being sold in more international markets, including India and Indonesia as their newest markets. And then a Piper Sandler survey found that Rare Beauty is the number two cosmetics brand among Gen Z. That is only behind 
Elf Cosmetics, and it is ahead of Maybelline, L'Oreal, and Fenty Beauty. So if you want to help out the Rare Impact Fund and you were looking to purchase some Rare Beauty anyway, October 10th would be the day to purchase. All right, my friend, we are now moving on to the product report. And as always, any links below may be affiliate links. And that means that I may earn a small commission off of your purchase if you click those links and buy. If you choose to do that, thank you so much. I really appreciate you helping to support the channel so that I can continue to do this full time and continue to bring you the news. Let us start with a very unusual collab with Charlotte Tilbury. I guess they're both British. I guess it kind of makes sense. But Elton John, has collaborated with Charlotte Tilbury. The Charlotte Tilbury website states, Darlings, the secret is out. I can finally reveal that my dear friend, the music legend and one of life's true visionaries, Elton John, is joining me to celebrate my favorite time of year in style in my new holiday campaign. Charlotte Tilbury is an official founding beauty partner of the Rocket Fund, which is powered by the Elton John AIDS Foundation. The purpose of the campaign is to shine a spotlight on Elton's mission to end AIDS aids everywhere. So what is in the collection, you may ask? There is a makeup bag and two lipsticks. The collection, of course, is limited edition with the Rockstar branding. The bag is $64 on its own, and it is meant to be either a makeup bag, a clutch, or you can use it as both. The lipsticks are called Rocket Girl and Ready for Lust, $38 each. You can get the bundle for $133. Or if you just rather donate directly, I I do have a link down below for you to do that. Do y'all remember that indie brand that launched the Unlicensed Wednesday collection? We talked about it here on What's Up in Makeup that they had taken stuff from Canva and designed products and then went to sell them when that's not allowed. <laughs> So I do feel bad because I'm sure that this was somebody's passion project and they just didn't look into it enough. If you go over to Astral Radiance's Instagram now, pretty much everything has been wiped as far as the Wednesday collection. There is still the thing that says the Wednesday collection is gone. The swatches are still there, but they're not identified as the Wednesday collection, but all of the images are all gone. They have not posted since they did their giveaway months ago. It seems like that brand may be completely gone at at this point. But if you had looked at that Wednesday collection and you were interested in a Wednesday makeup collection, there is one that just launched. It is Hard Candy's Wednesday licensed collab. It is now available at Walmart. This includes woefully delightful eyeshadow palettes, cookie glitter palettes, sharp edged liquid eyeliners, pout perfect lip liners, and a hands-on cleanser pad, which is basically like a makeup eraser pad thingy for makeup removal. Each product is priced under $7. For this next launch, I have not talked about this in a while. So you may or may not know this about me, but I love history. I love learning about things that are no longer. Anywhere from medieval history, Elizabethan history, I love dinosaurs, I mean, like running the gamut. Not every period in history, obviously, but whenever I see something really old, <laughs> I'm just absolutely fascinated by it. So this new launch of this new fragrance company has me very, very intrigued. It it is called Future Society, and they have used sequenced DNA of extinct flowers to develop their first six perfumes in the Scent Surrection collection. Now, every time I tell y'all that I have never seen something like this before, y'all tell me you've seen it before. So I hesitate to say that this has never been done before, but... I, this does not, I don't feel like this has been done before. I am just like, whoa, this is so cool. So according to the article that is linked below, of course, DNA sequencing technology made it possible to understand what scent molecules these flowers may have once produced. This data was then shared with world-renowned perfumers who use their knowledge of aroma chemicals and botany to create Future Society's fragrance collection. Each product page tells the story of the flower and why it may have become extinct. So things like deforestation in Borneo or urbanization in South Africa or droughts in India cause these plants to no longer exist, but you can smell them now for the low, low price of 
use a bottle. Actually, there is another option. If you want to smell these, they do have a sampler set. It's $35 for vials of all six fragrances. The full size bottles are 95 bucks each. You can get all of it on their website right now, and it is launching on Nordstrom's website on October 16th. And I had this in the cart. I had it, and then I saw the shipping. I was like, do I really need to pay $45 just to smell extinct flowers? Do I need that in my life? And I, I put it on hold. I decided to not, but I may break down. I may break down and get it anyway, because I am absolutely just, this is so cool. <laughs> The question I have for you for this next one is when does capitalizing on celebrity go too far? Like when is it exploitation? When is it more tabloid like? I'm thinking that Fireball Whiskey is dancing that line right now. Let me just show you the Instagram post. It says lipstick coming soon because every touchdown should taste like a championship parade. Limited edition details coming soon. So apparently Taylor Swift allegedly is now dating a football player. His name is Travis Kelsey. I know nothing about football. I do not know this man. If I saw him on the street, I would have no idea. But apparently he is very, very popular and he is a very good player. So Taylor has been going to the games to watch him play and this has created a ripple effect. Reuters published that Taylor's appearance at one of Travis's games prompted a 63% spike in viewership among women between the ages of 18 and 49. And then ESPN has said that Chiefs jerseys with Travis's name on the back of them have jumped nearly 400% since they allegedly started dating. So why is Fireball Whiskey getting involved in this? According to, again, articles linked down below, both Taylor and Travis both like Fireball. There was like a thing where Travis did a fireball catch and chug caught on video at the Chiefs Super Bowl victory parade last year. I will try to find it and I will insert it if I can find it. So going back to this being makeup related, they're trying to release this red lipstick that's supposed to match the lipstick Taylor's been wearing to the games. It is apparently cinnamon flavored to match Fireball, which is a cinnamon flavored whiskey. It is priced at $13.87. If you're fans of either one, Taylor Swift's favorite number is 13, Travis's number is 87, $13.87. And I'm sitting here like, Please don't break up. Please don't break up. Please don't break up. Because <laughs> it's like they're not even necessarily even officially dating and all of this is happening. So my question to you is, is this exploitation at this point or is this smart business marketing by Fireball? I want to know what you think. All I know is that I imagine if for some reason they do break up, Taylor's going to write a great song about it. Maybe something about a Fireball. Hopefully they do stay together, but... We will just have to wait and see. Let's go ahead and zip through some launches that happened across the interwebs this week. We have the Glaminatrix Cosmetics Rich Romantic Palette. Very pretty color story there. If you want something a little deeper, but just as like romantic-y, just a little sexier, we have the Cosmic Beauty Gothic Palette. And then we have Ensley Rain Cosmetics, which is hitting my heart in my Alice in Wonderland love and self. We have the Twisted Tea Party Palette. It is coming October 13th. Absolutely gorgeous there. Alter Ego released the Mirage palette, which I actually have to show you today. They sent it to me in PR. It is on my eyes today. We will talk about it in PR, purchased product of the week in just a moment. We also have the Wet n Wild Scooby-Doo collection that is now available at Walmart. It looks like an absolutely huge collection. The Revolution and It collection that we talked about last week, creepy as hell, available now. Juvia's Place launched the Afro Galactic collection. Now 
now available on their website. Such a fun concept. Love it so much. And now let us move over to Sephora and Ulta. And we are still in gift set land. We do have a few other launches, but it's mostly gift sets. The biggest launch I feel like for this week at cross both retailers is the Danessa Myricks Lightwork 5 I Am Palette for Eyes and Face. It is $125. Description says, an eye and face palette with 18 shades and six brilliant finishes and easy to use color shifting combinations inspired by I Am Affirmations. So the shade names are meant to inspire. You're supposed to say I Am and then there's shades like Resilient, Loved, Powerful, Unstoppable, stuff like that. I love this. Like I'm, if, if I had $125 I just wanted to blow, which I don't have right now, I would be blowing it on this because it is gorgeous. She also released the gift set it is the Dynamic Chrome Duo for face and eyes. It's $30. Infinite Chrome Flakes in Confetti and Color Fix Foils in Rock Candy. Also over at Sephora, a couple of things from Dior. We have the Dior Attic Beauty Ritual Set. It's $85. You get a full-size Dior Addict Lip Glow Balm and a full-size Dior Addict Lip Maximizer. And then you get a mini Capture Total Le Serum and a mini Miss Dior Perfume and a Couture Dior Pouch for that $85. They also released a new lipstick case with the design called Blooming Boudoir. It is $33. Last week, we talked about Charlotte Tilbury and how they had a bunch of releases that were in-store only. Those are now available on Sephora's website, but there is one addition to that. There is the Pillow Talk Collection gift set. It is $390. It is called the PT Dream come true set. It does include 13 full-sized pillow talk products for eyes, lips, and face. Patrick Ta released a holiday shade of his major volume plumping gloss. That's 26 bucks. And then Makeup Forever released two gift sets. This one is the mini artist color pencil lip and eyeliner set. It is very cute. I love the little pencils. They're totes with orbs. $35. They say it can be used for lip liner or for eyeliner. Then there is the Rouge Artist Forever Matte Liquid Lipstick Set, $29 there. Two full-size liquid lipsticks in Endlessly Blushed and Toffee at All Hours. From KVD Beauty, also two more gift sets. The Tattoo Duo Waterproof Vegan Eyeliner Set, $29. You get a full-size tattoo liquid liner and tattoo pencil liner. And the second is the Queen of Poisons Full-Size Vegan Transfer Proof Lip Duo, $28. You get a full-size liquid lipstick and a lip liner in that Queen of Poisons shade from Gucci. Lots of luxury lip sets uh, launched last week for the holidays, but Gucci is a week behind. Let's talk about those. Not like it really matters, but there's the mini three-piece matte lipstick festive gift, gift set. It's $45 and the three-piece glow and care shine lipstick festive gift set. That's $110. Ilya has a gift set this week. The Colorways multi-stick cream blush and highlighter set. That is $48. You get two mini sizes in Cosmic Dancer and an exclusive new color called Come Sunday, and then you get one full size in the shade Whisper. Refai released their Red Collection Lip and Cheek Set. That is $40. You get a lip sculpt in red, a mini lip gloss in red, and a creamy blush in cherry. Lawless released the Mini Dreamy Darlings Lip Plumper Gloss Set, $27. You get three plumping glosses in Rosy Outlook, Nudie, and Velvet. And if you want to bump up your price point a little bit more and get some Tom Ford for the holidays, we have the Soleil Neige line. That is an eye color quad for 90 bucks. And then there is a glow highlighter in two colorways. Those are $90 each as well. LYS has a gift set of their higher standard mini deluxe cream blushes. You get three of them for $20. The shades are humble, self-love, shimmer, and unique. From Valentino, another lip set. We have $50 for three Ross Valentino lipsticks in Roman Grace, Rosso Valentino, and under dressed velvet along with what they call a couture pouch. Now this one, big heads up on this one because this one is a thing. The Semi Haze Beauty Mini Velvet Blur Matte Lipstick Balm Set, $39. I reviewed this mini balm from Semi Haze Beauty, I guess it was over the summer. It is the smallest freaking lip balm I have ever seen in my entire life. It is so small that I lost it. I have no idea where it is. I looked for it before I started filming. Cannot find it anywhere. It is tiny. Oh, I wrote in my notes. I reviewed it back in February. It has one gram of product in each tube. 
one gram and actually it's probably less than one gram because the advertisement on there says 0.03 ounces so that converts to 0.85 grams so the one gram may be a round up, it may be a round down, I don't know. You don't have to be super, super duper exact on that stuff. But anyway, it's around a gram. So you get two of those for $39. This is compared to their full size. The full size is $36 for 30 grams. Why would anybody buy? I don't know. I'm assuming it must be something with the packaging. The packaging has to be like uber expensive or something to justify that price for such little product. Like, I don't, I don't know. I guess that maybe that was the only way they could do it with their packaging, with their branding. I don't know. That's nuts how expensive that is. If you want a little bit more product for a little less price, we have the Summer Fridays Mini Lip Butter Balm Set, $25. You do get four lip butter balms in vanilla, vanilla beige, brown sugar, and poppy. Those are very nice formula. I got one in FabFitFun, which is a sponsored video. Very, very much enjoyed it. This is another one that's making me side eye a little bit. The Tower 28 Lip Drip Cookie Butter Lip Gloss Set, $24. You get two Shine On Lip Jellies in chest chestnut and chill. There is nothing cookie butter about this. There's no cookie butter scent. None of the shades are called cookie butter. They're just, it's just repackaged chestnut and chill, which is the clear. It kind of looks cookie butter-ish. So they're rebranding it to sell as cookie butter when there's no, give me cookie butter scent. I would be disappointed if I purchased this and there was no cookie butter in there at all. But if you just like the shade that's similar to cookie butter, yeah, go for it. Enjoy. <laughs> One more gift set available now at Sephora, the Say Mini Dew Blush Trio Set, $30. You get the shades Rosy, Chili, and Baby. Then we have at Sephora some things coming soon. The Urban Decay Space Cowboy Moon Dust Eyeshadow Palette, $39. Great time to launch these. Topper shades are very, very popular right now. That's the Moon Dust formula. I think people are, that like topper shades are really going to love this. Last week, we talked about Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop launching Color Cosmetics. They are now coming to Sephora, the Color Blur Tinted Glow Lip Plus Cheek Balm with vitamin C, $34. All five shades will be available at Sephora. A lot of you commented that it looked like a ripoff of the Jones Road balms. I don't know. Somebody's going to compare them though, guaranteed. Someone's going to buy them and compare them. And then I have my big embarrassment from last week that I had to put a pin post because it was horribly embarrassing. So this, my friend, is the Melt and Halloween Town collection. Not Halloween Town, the movie. Halloween Town from Nightmare Before Christmas. And y'all knew that because you actually looked at the picture. Did I look at the picture? No. I assumed I wouldn't understand it because I haven't seen the Disney movie called Halloween Town. So I just figured I wouldn't get the references. So I never looked closely at the picture. And it was very embarrassing. So I am clarifying now, this is not Halloween Town the movie. It is Halloween Town from Nightmare Before Christmas. Some of y'all got a good laugh at me and I just got to laugh at myself. You know, it's my fault. I own it when I make a mistake. So if you are interested in the Halloween Town Nightmare Before Christmas Melt collab, we have an eyeshadow palette for 60 bucks launching soon on their website. I believe it's over at Melt already. The True Love Never Dies Digital Dust Highlight, that's $42. And then two gel liners, $24 each. There's a matte version and a metallic version. Over at Ulta, we have a brand that is brand new to Ulta. It is called Pound Cake. They have one product so far, the Cake Batter Liquid Lipstick, $24 each. It does come in six shades of red. They say it applies like butter and can be used as a lipstick, lip tint, or lip stain. From Half Magic Beauty, which is the Euphoria makeup artist Donnie Davies line, I Electric Extreme Lengthening Mascara. Supposedly, it is a tubing mascara. It comes in three shades, teal, black, and violet. They are 20 $25 each. And then the Everyday Fierce Set, $35. You get a liquid eyeliner and a glitter lip gloss. This week from Natasha Denona, we have two smaller palettes. The Mini Trichrome Eyeshadow Palette, $27. Gorgeous for blue lovers. And then the Baby Bronze Eyeshadow Palette for $19. Bucks. Lancome released their Beauty Box. They do this every year. And every time I see it, I gasp at the price. <gasps> because it is $588 for a $588 value. And it's like, who would buy that and then I remember that that's not what the deal is. You're not supposed to buy it at full price. This is the deal. You pay $79 for this collection, this $588 collection with any $42 Lancome purchase. You pick out your $42 worth of Lancome stuff, then you pay an additional $79 to get this. You get seven full-size Lancome products with three deluxe samples. This year, full-size, you are going to get the Genifique Serum, the Genifique Eye Cream, Eye and Face Palette, the La Absolute Rouge, 
Rouge Lipstick in Exotic Orchid, the Lash Adol Mascara, the Sills Booster XL Lash Primer, and the Bifacil, I think I, I think I said that wrong, makeup remover. Their makeup remover. And you also get a that big makeup bag that's in the back. As far as deluxe sizes, you get the Absolute Soft Cream Moisturizer, the Tonique Comfort Toner, and the La Vie S. Belle Perfume. And this final product and the product report that I want to share with you, it may or may not be new. It's new to me. I've never seen it before and I'm very intrigued. You all know how much I love the Vanilla Clean It Zero Cleansing Balm. It is one of my favorites of all time. They have uh, what I believe is a new version of it. This is the firming option. They also have a brightening option that I've never seen before, but I've imagined that one probably came out in the spring or summer. It is on sale for $16.80. The regular price on these is $24. If you're interested in trying a few of these, they do have a gift set. The Clean It Zero Best of Balms Trio with deluxe sizes of the brightening, clarifying, and original formulas. That's $27. All right, my friends, PR or purchase product of the week. We have the Mirage palette by Alter Ego. And you may or may not know that Alter Ego, you know, a lot of times they just look like other palettes. I don't know why they look like other palettes. They just do. <laughs> so this one is gorgeous. It is what is on my eyes today. It's a little warm than what I typically wear, but I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks fine. I think I might, I, I, in future, I may tone down the orange just a little bit, but I think it looks fine. For my lipstick today, I use that Dose of Colors lip gloss that I purchased, and then I put the shade Blush over top of it, and that's my lipstick. I also put a tiny bit of the Cleopatra shade right in the middle to give my, my lips a little juicy pop. And then on my eyes today, I used the shade Dunes, I used Blush, and I used Endless. And then for my eyeliner today, I used that fun little tool. This little guy that I got for the Amazon video that I did this past Friday, I love this thing. I think I'm gonna use it all the time now. I love it. It helps you to like make your wings nice and even, the right, the same length, the same angle. Freaking love this thing. It was $4.44. If you haven't watched that Amazon video, it's actually very good. I think you should watch it. So I use this shade Crypt as my eyeliner for today. And I think it looks really cute. So the Mirage palette, fantastic. Alter Ego, again, I don't know what magic they got going on over there, but they do something over there. It makes the, the formulas fantastic for a very inexpensive price. Too Faced also sent over their Fluff and Hold Laminating Brow Wax. That's why my brows look the way they do. Very nice hold on this, but it's not crunchy. Really love this. Let me show you the wand. It's pretty typical. I mean, it's nothing like, the, I mean, it's what you would expect the to look like but it works really really well this is the third time I've used it I'm really enjoying it I love the hold on it and it's not crunchy and it doesn't smell weird so that makes me happy they also sent over another shade of their cloud crush blurring blush I have another one of these I've been using this one this one is in the shade watermelon rain they sent that one over a while ago and now they sent over the velvet crush one so this is my blush today it actually looks a little more coral on my cheeks I think because of the bronzer that I use oh my gosh which is also PR from Too Faced. I love this packaging. It just looks pretty sitting out and then I end up grabbing for it. It's just their natural chocolate golden cocoa shade, which I think made this look a little bit more orange than it would have if I hadn't used this bronzer. But I love this formula. I do. I think they do a really nice job with this. If they can get their eyeshadow palettes to be as consistently good as their blushes, they're gonna be set. They, they need to work on the eyeshadow formula, but the blushes, yes, loving them. Notable sales this week we have from Pharmacy, 20% off for their birthday sale. And then we have from KVD Beauty, 30% off friends and family sale, plus 50% off of select products. And the Sephora savings event that happens around this time every year has been announced. It is from October 27th through November 6th. It has their typical tiered entry system where Rouge get in first. The more you spend, the earlier you get in and the more discount you get, but everybody gets 30% off of the Sephora collection products throughout the sale. And that, my friends, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And thank you, as always, to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so, so much for all of your submissions this week. I appreciate you with my entire soul. Our chat today is going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We're going to be hanging out, talking about makeup. Hopefully, you can join us. If you can't join us, it is no problem. You can always watch or listen to it on the replay. If you're subscribed, it should be just hanging out in your subscription feed. If you're not subscribed, 
subscribe, you should subscribe. Because how many What's Up and Makeups or videos on my channel have you watched? Just subscribe. You know you like the channel. Just subscribe. But if you don't want to subscribe, that's okay too. You do you. Uh, you can also head over to my channel page and click on the live tab. That's where all of my live streams are housed. Or in the video description, there is the What's Up and Makeup live chat podcast. You can also click on that and watch it from there. You can subscribe over there as well. And that'll go into your YouTube music podcast feed. Thank you so, so much for watching What's Up in Makeup this week. I do want to give you a quick heads up that there will be no episode of What's Up in Makeup next week. I'm going to be on a trip with my mother across the country in Sonoma, California, hanging out, drinking some wine. So there will be no show, but I should be back in time to do live chat next week, which will also be at 10 a.m. Eastern time. If you look forward to the 5 p.m. Eastern chats, the next one of those will be the first Sunday in November. Thank you for the millionth time for watching What's of Makeup. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to hang out just a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch, including last week's episode of What's of Makeup should be right there. YouTube's gonna pick the top one based on your personal viewing history. But if you do need to go, it is absolutely no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. I appreciate you, mad love to you, and I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye!